Welcome to Going Carnivore in Thailand. Now, I want to thank my user 604 Nation because they had asked the question on a previous video, how did you go from 190 to 380 pounds? What was the story? Well, that got me thinking, and I decided to work on reconstructing my memory over time on all the trials and tribulations, along with some associated stories of what transpired from 1977 when I was 22 years old to present day. So let's get to it with this episode. Going carnivore in Thailand. More in the, my frog series. How did I go from 190 to 380? Well, I want to tell you a little story about what was going on in 1979. I was 24 years old, and I was still in pretty good shape. But back then, even then, I was always worried about my weight. And... I tried some diets that were stupid, but I want to tell you a little a couple of little stories about one of the most fun diets that I was ever crazy enough to do, and I did it for like six months, maybe even longer than six months. It's 1979. I had this beautiful girlfriend named Jill. And Jill was a live wire. I really loved that girl. And she was a lot of fun. Well, I don't know how we got onto this, but she used to go to work, and I'd go to work, and we'd come home. And the nights that we spent together, not every night, but the nights that we spent together, uh, we ended up, doing the champagne and popcorn diet. Now, it usually entailed popping corn and popping the top off of a bottle of cheap champagne. Did I say bottle? I meant to say bottles, like two. And sometimes it was not in that order. It was like, come home. Get an ice-cold bottle of champagne out of the cooler and pop that top, pour myself. I used to drink the champagne out of frosted beer mugs. I know, go, go figure, right? And it was a rosé champagne. It was cheap, and I loved the taste of it. And I had... This diet meant that I went all day and didn't eat. It was intermittent fasting, but I didn't even think about it. And it was basically pure carbs and sugar. But man, was it a lot of fun. So one night, I, first I have to tell you, one night I came home, started drinking this champagne. And this was 1979, so there was no cell phones. You, I had, I was living in a house, and it had a phone on the kitchen wall, and the phone had a, basically a 25 foot long coiled cord, and was sort of like one of those princess phones with the. Dial in the handset, pick it up. You could take it with you, and you could sit in the living room. You could work in the kitchen. You could go in the den. It went a long way. It was a small house. So I decided I needed to start cooking some popcorn. And the type of cooker I had was called a Presto Pop. And it was a flat heat plate, heated plate, and it had this big orange bowl 
that would go over top of the heat plate and you would pour oil on top of the heat plate and then you pour in a load of corn turn it on and put the the top on it and it would start popping and when this thing popped you could hear it pop for the most part but the important thing was to listen for when the pop started slowing down and to unplug it well it i just fired this load up and i get ring ring well i just fired this thing up and i hear the telephone and i don't remember who was on the call but i think i, I don't remember but what i do remember is i got involved in the call and forgot to listen for the slowing down of the popcorn well after it starts slowing down and there's no more popping left, it starts burning. And if you guys, I'm sure you, you all have once in your life smelt burnt popcorn. It's not a good smell. So anyway, after I smelled the popcorn stinking up to high heaven, I went in there, unplugged it, took the popcorn, put it in a bag, and it stunk so bad I didn't have really time to, to take it anywhere. So I actually opened up the sliding glass door in the kitchen and set it out on the back porch and closed in a little paper bag that I had. Closed the door poured more oil, poured more popcorn, plugged it back in, put the little bowl on top, went back to my phone call that I was doing, and had some more champagne. And that champagne tasted good. And I got a little more buzz. And I didn't pay attention to the, to the champagne. I didn't pay attention to popping again. And here I... Burned another batch, stunk up the whole kitchen. I go back in, I throw this batch into a bag, put this bag out on the porch, and said, By God, I'm going to pay attention this time. I pour more oil, put more popcorn, I put that big old presto bowl over top, and I said, I'm going to pay attention. So I'm on the call. Don't know what I was talking about, but it must have been important to me at the time. So pop, 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 and started slowing down. I said, okay, I got this. It's not going to burn. So I took the popcorn popper and I flipped it over and turned it upside down. Now, the hot plate is still on top, but all the corn fell away from the hot plate. It's in, it's in the orange bowl below it. The, the popped corn and the unpopped corn, everything went below. And I just set it on the counter because it would set that way because they have a flat little spot that would balance it. And I said, good, it won't burn now. And I went back to, <laughs> I went back to my call. Well, the one thing I forgot to do was to unplug it. Now, this hot plate's still putting out a tremendous amount of heat for popping that corn. And that heat's building up while I'm in the other room on a phone call. And that orange plastic bowl starts to deform and melt. Now the hot plate's getting lower and lower and lower and lower. Now the bowl now, instead of being this deep, it's about that deep. And now the popcorn's starting to touch the plate and it's starting to burn again. So I smelled it burning. I said, what the 
frick is this? So I get up, I go back in the kitchen and hear the popcorn makers all destroyed. It was still there. So by that time, I'm catching a pretty good buzz, and this is the third batch of popcorn I stunk up the house with. So I pulled the plug out of the wall, grabbed the popcorn maker by both sides like this after opening the back door, and I threw the son of a bitch out into the backyard. Popcorn, popcorn maker, everything. Saying a few choice words during the way. but. Believe it or not, this diet, when you coupled it with intermittent fasting, was the most fun diet I've, I've ever was on that was technically supposed to be a diet. I was just trying to lose, you know, five pounds. Trying to lose five, eight, ten pounds, somewhere in that neighborhood. You know, nothing, nothing's fabulous. Plus, we started eating that popcorn and champagne, and I'll tell you what, those two go together like, you know, Maple syrup and pancakes. Uh, back in the day, you know, when you're young and dumb, it was a great time. It really was. Me and Jill would eat that popcorn and champagne. And uh, it eventually led to the fact that I was drinking champagne like five days, six days a week. To the point where one girl actually thought I might be an alcoholic. And uh, this wasn't Jill. This was Jan. So she didn't like alcoholics. I said, I'm not an alcoholic. I just enjoy it. So she said something about it, which scared me. Because I didn't want to be an alcoholic. So I ended up getting rid of the popcorn and champagne diet. And for six months, I didn't have a drink of any kind. No beer, no champagne, no wine, no whiskey, nothing. Six months. Which proved to myself, I like to have fun, but I wasn't an alcoholic. I was just doing to have fun. I do not have an addictive personality, nor do I have probably an addictive uh, biology for alcohol or drugs. I do have an addictive body for sugar. Although at 24 years old, I didn't know that too much. So that's my story of 1979 which was early in my career as a frog in the pot. And at that point, I was young and I was working hard. I was working very hard. Physical work. And I think if I would have stayed doing that physical work, I might have been able to be that frog in the pot for a lot longer with a lot less weight gain. Because going out there and, and humping those lead weights every day, that really, that's really something that goes a long way to keeping you thin. Even when you're eating pure carbs once a day and drinking pure sugar once a day with the champagne. And uh, champagne's just a lot of fun. Now, I know somebody's going to say, what kind of champagne did you drink? So in order to not have to answer it in the comments, I do hope you do comment, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh there was a champagne called Andre, A-N-D-R-E. And it was called Andre Pink Champagne. I don't know how I got onto it. I think Jill drank it. And I like the taste of it. Let me tell you, don't eat all day. Knock down a couple bottles of Andre, and you're going to have a good time. 
Only problem is you need somebody to drive the popcorn maker. Now, let me tell you one more story about popcorn maker before I go, because you might have thought the story's over, but you're not. When I was 13, I started to work for a carnival com company called Aline Renz. During the weekends in the summer, we would set up carnivals. Uh, a lot of them at Catholic churches and schools and that sort of thing. You know, the St. Anne's ca Carnival and the St. Bartholomew's Carnival. And one of the things that we would bring out, in addition to Ferris wheels and scramblers and rides, we had this popcorn trailer. And it was a trailer that had a, uh, a popcorn machine and had a cotton candy machine. Cotton candy, you take colored sugar and you put it in the middle of the cotton candy machine, it heats up and spins and makes the cotton candy. And then you take a paper cone, you twirl it around, and you create this big ball of cotton candy. Well, we had this new kid come. I was like, I don't know, 14, 15 at the time. He was younger than me. He was less. Maybe I was 16. And my boss, Tim, said, teach him how to run the popcorn trailer. And I said, okay, fine. So one of the things we had was a gold medal popcorn machine where you put the oil, a packet of oil in, a packet of popcorn in. And by the way, I knew how to get this from the gold medal company down in Cincinnati, Ohio. So that's why I used it at home a lot of times too. Not the machine, but we used the popcorn and the, and the oil. So on the machine, there's a couple on-off switches, like turn the kettle on, turn the little thing that spins the that spins the popcorn around the kettle so it don't burn. It has a little bar that turns inside the kettle. And there's this red light. And the red light comes on when the kettle's not quite hot enough. It'll come on and the kettle will get hotter and then the red light will go off. So, Larry, he, he was the guy I was teaching. He said, what's this red light for? And being the prankster I am, I said, oh, my goodness. I said, if that red light comes on, get the hell out of here. It's going to blow up. Literally, heat builds up so much, it explodes like a bomb. So if you see the red light on, get out of here quick so you don't get hurt. Well, <laughs> well, we were we were operating the trailer and I had stepped out for a few minutes and all of a sudden I hear Larry yell, it's a bomb, get away. And he dove through the window of, of the popcorn trailer. Because he saw the red light came on. He had customers at the window. And he yelled, bomb, get away. And he didn't even wait to go through the door. He His skinny little ass just jumped straight out through the window where he was serving the popcorn to the people. And the people started moving back because he thought they were nuts. And I knew what happened. I'm rolling on the ground laughing my ass off. So just another story about popcorn, because, you know, I like to tell stories. Thanks for watching. That's all, folks.